Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience, meaning the endurance of going through the trials and tribulations of this life of the saints, of the saints. I'll start that over again. Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience or endurance of the trials and tribulations of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see, it's two things. Now, and this is this this is a perfect example of the false doctrine of you don't have to follow the law, statutes, commandments of God that the Gentiles have told you. Right here, the last book, Revelation, 4, Revelation, and in chapter 14 and 12, it says, "Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. You have to keep the commandments and have faith in." our Savior who is King and to the Israelites I will tell you that, that Yahweh Shai is King right now we're not waiting for him to come back to establish to be King, we know he's King of our lives right now this very day you understand that? we're glorifying the Father and the Son the Son of God Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that's what we're glorifying now what do you glorify in Christianity Catholicism and Islam. What do you glorify? Islam purportedly glorifies Allah. Allah just means power. See, we know we know that we do studies. All right, Allah just means power. That's what God means, power. And they'll say, "Well, Allah is in the Bible." Well, yes, it is, because it means power. It appears one time. Okay, I believe it's in Deuteronomy. It appears one time. Allah. It means power. It's not, it's not a, that doesn't mean that their God is the same as our God because their book even tells you, let's get that. Let's, hey, what, again, what if what the Israelites are saying is true? You need to ask yourself that question. What if what the Israelites are saying is true? And right now I'm about to read to you some interesting facts about the Quran. What does the Quran say about Israel or the Israelites? In Surah 3, verse 84, it says, We believe in Allah and in what has been revealed to us and what was revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, the Israelites. And in his parenthetical books, the books given to Moses, Jesus, and the prophets from, uh, from, their, from their Lord. Does it say our Lord? No, it says from their Lord. From their Lord. See, they're not part of this. They know they're not part of this. Now you got Farrakhan claiming to be the children of Israel too. Everybody, everybody's trying to jump on the Israelite bandwagon. Okay? Even the Christians, the Muslims, they're trying to do it too. But let's, let's read that again. It says, We believe in Allah, which means power, and in what has been revealed to us, and what was revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob and the tribes and in the books given to Moses, Jesus and the prophets from their Lord from their Lord from their Lord we make no distinction between one and another among them and to Allah do we bow our will in Islam okay Islam just means peace alright we, we know alright here it is now I parenthetically wrote this and comment about that Ishmael is not highlighted because, and I highlighted certain things in here. Ishmael, Ishmael is not highlighted because the books make, the books meaning the Bible from uh, Genesis to Malachi make no reference to him receiving a calling. He did not receive an election, nor did Ishmael receive a promise, uh, uh, a promise such as was given to the Israelites. Now he had, he gave, he was, he was promised 12 princes. That's what he was promised, okay? But not salvation, not eternal life not to be the chosen seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
In fact, the writers of the Quran inserted Israel where it does not belong in the line of patriarchy, meaning the fathers. He is not the father of Isaac. He is Abraham's son and Isaac's brother. You understand that? So see, what they have done in trying to include them in those, to the, in the Israelites is that uh, Israel and the patriarchs is they tried to insert Ishmael in there. All right, here's another one, Surah 2 and 122. O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor, the special favor, the special favor which I has bestowed upon you and that I preferred you and that I preferred you and that I preferred you to all others. I preferred you, the Israelites, to all others. That is what the Quran says. And most people in, in, in Islam don't read the Quran, just like most Christians don't read this Bible. And this is why you get to listen to people tell you what's in it, and you believe what you're told, as opposed to reading along and finding out what you're being told is a lie. I did that very same thing in Crossword Christian Church under Pastor Sykes, Lacey Sykes, all right? And I used to point out to my wife the mistakes he was making. And then when he got to the point where he said he wanted a contract between the, all the people in the church to give hundreds of dollars for him to get another building to expand his church, I left that church because that's false doctrine. But the, the fact that he wanted you to contract, sign your name to a contract for hundreds of dollars was ridiculous. Makes no sense. But again, all of these religions are about taking money out of your pocket and getting wealthy. That's what it's about. That's the chief cause. That's the reason why all of them, are, not all of them, that's the reason why the majority of the, of the dominant Christian denominations that have been around hundreds of years are so wealthy. Because they take money and, and collect it from the people and then they use it for whatever it means they want. Now, the Quran says to study the book. What is the book? It's the Bible. The book is the Bible. Okay, this is in Surah 2, 121. Those to whom we have sent the book, study it as it should be studied. So they sent around Genesis to Malachi amongst Islam. They sent it to people in there. What does it say? It says, to those whom we have sent the book, study it, study it as it should be studied. They are the ones that believe their end. Those who reject faith their end lose the loss is their own. I'll read that again. Those who reject faith therein, the loss is their own. And the same thing for you today, you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans. If you refuse what we're reading in the Bible, then the loss is your own, meaning you're going to go into destruction in that lake that burns with fire. Now, my notes on this is, this, uh, what this is saying is that the one that reads the book is the one that believe in it. Those that reject the faith are a loss. All right? And we know, according to Zechariah, our forefather, the prophet Zechariah, said that two-thirds, two-thirds of Israel are not going to believe and are going to die. You understand that? So we, and I, what does that mean? That also means that two out of three people are going to be the most wicked of our people, of the so-called black Latinos, Native Americans. That's what it means. It means that two out of three people are going to do more wickedness than the one that's doing righteousness. That's what it's saying, okay? That's what it's saying. Only one out of three is going to obey. Only one out of three is going to repent. And two out of three is going to be hell on earth. They're going to continue in their wickedness. They're going to continue to be transgender, homosexuals, lesbians, pedophiles, bestiality, bestiality practices, witchcraft practices, setting up monuments at graves at death sites. That's what a lot of our Latino brothers and sisters do. They set up memorials at death sites. That is a Catholic doctrine, all right? It's a pagan doctrine. We're not supposed to do that. And then they bring food. They have, our Hispanic brothers have the Day of the Dead where they, where they celebrate their ancestors. We're not supposed to celebrate ancestors. We're not supposed to celebrate ancestors. We're not supposed to celebrate ancestors. We're not calling upon ancestors to give us any information like they try to teach you in the, in the Black Panther movies and they don't further the affliction in Black Panther 2. I haven't seen it yet, but this is what they're doing. They want you to do all of this pagan stuff. Hey, don't forget what America signed into law 
the 14, the 400 years of African Americans being in America Commission Act. You remember that? Well, that act talked about all of these things that they were going to bring forth. And all it was was more crafty counsel to destroy so-called blacks, to keep them in sin, keep them separated from their God. You see, when you follow these laws, statutes, and commandments, you are connected to God. If you're disobedient to laws and statutes and commandments, you are disconnected from God. You understand that? It's that simple. Let's go on with this sewer of two, uh, 2 and uh, 121. This is further explanation. The book is the Torah or the first five books of our present Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. The books of Judges through Malachi scriptures were written by the Israelites and for the Israelites. Genesis through Malachi provide an historical record of God's rule over the Israelites, our prophets, and wisdom. It can be concluded that the books outside of the Torah were not accepted by them because Ishmael is not mentioned in a way that supports the purported divine inspiration of the Quran. Because they're trying to say that the Quran was divinely inspired like the Bible, and it was not. As well as the books of Matthew through Revelation do not apply uh, or are directed toward any descendants of Israel because these books are for the descendants of the Israelites and also make a distinction between the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. All right, that's what's really going on. But unfortunately, our people are suffering from identity theft and that identity theft have, has left them to the point where they have clung to some things that was telling them and giving them some, telling them hope and giving them hope, which is what Islam did back in the day. Continue on. In reading some of the verses before and after those above, there is confusion as, uh, as what to do or not to do in that religion, that being Islam. For instance, how can it say to read the book, the Bible, but if they follow, if they follow the Jews or Christians' religion, they will not receive the protector or helper against their God. I know why I can say that because I have studied this subject. Study it if you are interested. Look for Christianity and Islam differences. There's much information on this subject. Then you have Surah 2 and 120, for instance. Never will the Jews or the Christians be satisfied with the, with the, with the um, Arabs, the people who adhere to Islam, in the Quran, never will the Jews or the Christians be satisfied with thee unless thou follow their form of religion. And that was in uh, the guidance of Allah. This is the only guidance. That's a book. Wert thou to follow their desires after the knowledge which have reached thee? Then thou wouldst thou find neither protector nor helper against Allah. See, so they tell you that the Jews and the Christians were not accepted. Now we're two now. The, the Jews and Christians really are two distinctly different people. Number one. Now we do know that the Israelites were first called called Christian in Antioch. We were, we did not call ourselves that. Understand that? The Romans called the Israelites Christians. We did not call ourselves that. So today, they got our, our people so damn hypnotized that we, 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 we love to claim ourselves to be Christian. We think that being called Christian is, is being holy or, or set apart, and it's not. How can you be set apart by name? All right? You're called to be set apart, but if you're not doing what the Lord God requires, you are not set apart. You are set apart if you are so-called black, so-called Latino, Hispanic, or so-called Native American who's following these laws, statutes, and commandments. That is how you are set apart. That is how you are holy. <clears throat> now here's, here's something interesting. The Jewish folks have kept record on Islam. This is an article, uh, Islam references to Jews in the Quran. It says the Jewish view is a bit different because they do not concern themselves with the other 11 tribes of Israel. They only concern themselves with Judah. They see that they, they can't because the moment that they, they talk about the other tribes, where the other tribes are, the fact that they're, the other tribes are not in the land, they're only the so-called Jews in the land, the land over there, the fake Jews, all right? 
The reason why they do that because then all of their narrative falls apart. The prophecy is that all 12 tribes will return, not one. And then after that, there'll be peace. There's no peace in that land. They've been fighting, they've been fighting forever since they've been there. Okay, the word Jewish is, is worth researching as well. So what does Jewish mean? The ish, I-S-H suffix means like. Okay, it means like. And this is from the Oxford Dictionary. All right? The English, the European Dictionary, it tells you what it, what it is. That suffix means, it's used, as, used to form adjectives that say what a person, thing, or action is like. You understand that? It doesn't mean they're people. It doesn't mean they're a race. It means, it's used, ish, ISH is used to form adjectives to say what a person, thing, or action is like. For instance, fool-ish, child-ish, like a child or like a fool, right? Then you have, it's also used as used to form adjectives to give meaning to some degree, such, uh, fairly. For instance, he had a sort of reddish beard. His beard wasn't totally red, it was reddish, like red. She was oldish, about 60, I'd say. So she was, she looked like she was about 60, but she might not have been 60. We'll start at seven-ish, meaning you'll start at about seven o'clock. Grammar, ish, and, and uh, why, from English grammar today. We can add the suffixes ish and y to words in informal context to make the reference sound deliberately vague and approximate. We commonly, we commonly, we, we commonly use the suffix ish when we refer to numbers, times, and quantities. Okay, example sentence. Okay, I'll come and collect you from your house at seven ish. Answer, how old do you think he is? 40-ish, possibly older. So there you go, all right? That is, that is Islam talking about following the Bible, follow what the Israelites are doing, yet they don't do that today, all right? None of those Arabs are doing what the Israelites say to do, what was given to the Israelites in the scriptures. None of the so-called nation of Islam or the new nation of Islam, whatever the hell they call it over here, are doing anything related to the Bible. They have their own understanding, interpretation, again, collective money, control of people's minds, and not telling the truth.